That means, besides having very high DPS, that uh, Thanatos will have the lowest hit point value, because it will have the lowest resistances, but we will see uh, how that will. And first thing that you will notice is that 6436.59 DPS, with, without any damage mods, and that is actually impressive. That equals the hot DPS value of the previous carriers with dual damage mods. So I really expect some uh, phenomenal DPS out of the Thanatos. And of course, uh, the ship will have a little bit less hit points because the resistances will be a little bit worse than, than the other carriers, but the other stats are generally the same. So uh, the only thing where uh, this ship is a little bit different is the resistance. I already have the Armor Command Burst module, which will help at the resistance a little bit, but of course it will not have any skill per level bonus that will improve the resistance points on this ship. Now you can fit dual target painters if you like, or dual neutralizers, depends on uh, what you need. The I will use the Galante fighters with uh, the Mimeter fighters on this ship. And here you can see that the Fearbolic is actually the slowest. So using the fighter micro updrive guide will be very important for this ship. And of course the Mimeter fighter will be the fastest. I will be doing explosive and thermal damage with this current build. But overall, uh, I really like the I really like the fighters. Now, this is the build with the anti-aircraft fighters that are designed to go uh, after smaller ships. They are generally a little bit faster, but I noticed that they do a lot less damage. So uh, you can use them if you uh, want to chase down fast ships, but even the larger light fighters are still capable to reach small ships, especially with the micro updrive guide. You can fit several of the micro updrive guides if you like, but in my case, one was more than enough. And overall, the stats on these fighters is still very nice. Although I did, I did say that I prefer the heavier ones because of the higher damage output. Now this is the balanced build with uh, three adaptives, dual capacitor batteries, dual armor pairs and one afterburner. As for the rigs, I did go with the exact same uh, rig integration setup as with the previous carriers. I really like this current build, but it's not entirely necessary that you go with integrations. You can use the normal rigs if you like. In my case, I like to use the integrations because they allow me to combine multiple stats into one single rig and so far that seems to be working really well. Overall, uh, I'm very satisfied with the combat rig integrations on this ship and of course the engineering rigs will be focused on the capacitor because the capacitor is the second most important uh, thing on any capital ship because the capacitor will maintain your tank and of course your ship will survive a lot of a lot of incoming damage if you have the capacitor now let's take a look at the uh, active resistance with this build now i like this build because i have very high dps but the fighters will be slow so not the ideal build that I would personally use. Here you can take a look at the armor resistances. Really nice, but still a little bit less if, if we compare uh, the armor resistance with the Archon, because the ship does lack the armor resistance bonus that other carriers get from the skills, but overall uh, looks really nice. You can replace one capacitor battery with a damage control, which will give you 8.64% resistance and by default that will raise the effective hit points. So let me take a look at the hit points with the damage control. The passive will give you 
a little bit more uh, yeah definitely a little bit more resistance and of course a little bit more effective hit points now when you activate the damage control the overall hit points hit points should be around 4 million that's my estimate and yeah 4 million yeah that's that's around what I did expect not bad one and a half million less than the Archon but of course this ship has higher DPS so they are quite balanced in that aspect and of course I always forget that uh, you can't dock for 60 seconds after you use the command burst module it gives you weapon timer now uh, this is the build that I like to use on carriers dual damage mods with one micro drive guide that will improve the damage output on the fighters and of course will improve their flight velocity which is very important I think flight velocity is actually more important than the raw DPS on a carrier but I would say both are important in the end so uh, let's take a look at one damage mod active 7.4 thousand very nice already already very close to the Nihogur in case uh, of the DPS and 8.2 thousand DPS with dual damage mod active now I really like uh, the DPS on the Tenatos and I think this sh this this carrier actually has the highest uh, DPS output of all carriers. The second place will go to the Nithugur. But uh, before I go to that conclusion, let's uh, let's talk and let me slap three more uh, of the damage mods just to see what's the maximum possible DPS with this current build. Now I personally don't really recommend that you fly uh, in to fly any carrier with this build because this is just me testing out the maximum possible performance, the maximum possible DPS. This is a build that I would never use in low sec or null sec because it doesn't have enough defense for a capital ship. Now uh, the DPS with one damage mod, 6.4 thousand with my apologies, uh, with one damage mod, the DPS is 7.4 thousand. With dual damage mods, it's 8.2 thousand. Okay, let's turn on the third module. Now it's at 8.8 thousand. We are nearing the 9 thousand DPS mark, which is impressive. Now with the fourth one, 9.1 thousand. Well, over 9 thousand. That's definitely very nice. And the last one should give me plus 100 DPS. And it did give me exactly 100 DPS, 9.2 thousand DPS on the Thanatos with this current DPS build. You know, I actually really like this ship and now I'm kind of torn between the Nithugur and the Thanatos. Both have very good DPS, but the Mimatar carrier does have a bonus on speed, so the fighters do reach the target a little bit faster but this thing shreds uh, the DPS output on this carrier is comparable to the DPS output of the Naglifar that I fly which is a dreadnought and of course Docking it is comparable accepted. to the tank revelation build which has around 11,000 DPS I believe so uh, this thing is a DPS monster and I personally did not expect the DPS to go this high. I expected something around the levels of the Nithugur, but I was wrong. And it turns out the Thanatos has the highest DPS output out of all carriers, at least at the moment. So, uh, let's have some fun and let's see how this thing works. Now, at the moment, uh, I did establish that this uh, current build that I use is the build that I personally really really like for carriers it gives me the decent decent defenses and of course decent DPS in this case uh, because this is a DPS build the DPS is the main thing that I did focus on and 
fun so far. As for missions, uh, no issues whatsoever. I would actually... I, I think at the moment uh, I'm quite comfortable to do missions in low stack with a carrier. Was, you know, a little bit weird at first, but once I got used to it, it's actually very fun. And uh, very weird to say this, but I'm starting to prefer a carrier over a striker battleship for low stack missions. Because we destroy a lot of uh, ships every day. And some of these ships are strikers. Now, if, let's say, we were to tackle a carrier, that would be a little bit difficult because if the carrier has a build like this or similar to the build that I use, then the tackle ship will be destroyed in basically a couple hits. While the striker battleship can do the same thing, but not quite because fighters basically can't can't miss. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, make the fighters miss. Unless, of course, uh, you don't have a micro drive guide module that will improve the speed of of those hornets, but uh, in case of the striker battleships, let's say the apocalypse striker, if you have tracking disruptors, if you orbit at zero, then the apocalypse striker is in very big trouble. And that is based on my personal experience with those ships. Now a carrier, well, I don't know, uh, I would say, what ship can tackle a carrier? Well, a tanky battleship. You need to throw a tanky battleship with 4 or 5 scramblers at the carrier, or not even, you don't need a lot of points to hold uh, one of these ships. One point is more than enough because I think we don't have any warp compromisers for capital ships at the moment. So one point would be enough. But the problem is to survive the DPS of a carrier. They can easily destroy an entire fleet uh, in low sec at least. In low sec it's a little bit different but um, in low sec a classic pirate fleet will have a problem with a carrier. So uh, basically you will need to have a lot of ships on standby if you ever find a carrier in low sec. And that is if the carrier doesn't have any uh, support. I would expect that a carrier will have some form of defense in low sec, some form of escort, but I, I don't know, uh, last time I did talk about seeing a PvE Rorqual and I did joke about seeing some insurance claims on the market, well there are actually a couple of insurance claims on the Rorqual on the market, so there's mo most likely that Rorqual that was involved in low sec mission running, most likely it was destroyed. But I don't know, I haven't seen any kill mail yet, so who knows what happened. Personally, uh, I don't know, but there is a chance that a PvE Rorqual was destroyed. Now this is a 30 or 35 million isk encounter. That elite battleship was quite tanky. It did tank. It did tank 8,000 DPS for for 30 seconds, I think, which is impressive. Of course, a player ship will not last that long against 8,000 DPS. For example, uh, my Hyperion can tank 8,000 DPS because I did fully integrate that thing. And of course, I have a new nanocore that I will show you in a couple days. That new nanocore made the Hyperion busted. That thing is ridiculous. Not quite sure... Not quite sure what I would do with that ship, honestly. I don't fight the Hyperion that often anymore. 
because of a lot of things, a lot of things ha has happened. But I really wish that uh, I can. I really wish that I did fly the Hyperion a lot more often. Uh, lately, we haven't had any fleet jump in in our home system. Basically, any fleet that jumps in and that stays for a while, once any of uh, our corp mates logs in, uh, they immediately uh, leave the gate. So we didn't uh, have a lot of ships camp our gate and didn't have a lot of camps to crash in the last couple weeks. Then that's okay. I blame the capital ships for that. The capital ships did scare everyone off. It used to be a lot different uh, before we started flying dreadnoughts and carriers, but now since we have those big boats, it's a lot different uh, than before, that's for sure. Back then, we couldn't sleep on the gate. Now, uh, I clock maybe 5 to 10 hours every night on, on that gate, sleeping in, in the Balagorn or in the Revelation. Depends on, uh, on the ship that I fly, but I always wake up to another bubble and I always wake up to a friendly bubble with full shield so yeah basically no one attempted to to shoot down a sleeping dreadnought which is kind of funny so uh, I've cleared the first mission very quickly and I have to admit I'm really impressed by the Thanatos not really sure why why this ship isn't the, the most popular carrier. It has phenomenal DPS and overall, uh, I would say, Warp drive that's active. Not one of the more fun carriers to fly. The Chimera was a little bit boring, I would I will admit. Now when I think about it, the Chimera might be the, I think the most, I don't know, I personally did not quite enjoy flying that ship. Not quite sure why, there is something that just didn't synchronize with me, I guess. The Chimera actually has the lowest DPS out of all uh, carriers, but it has the, I think, the highest damage replication because of the explosion velocity bonus. But then I remember someone telling me that the explosion velocity bonus is kind of pointless because fighters already shred everything. But in, in my case, I personally haven't <laughs> haven't had any problems with uh, clearing anything. It was really enjoyable, although I personally don't quite. It's not that it's not that I don't like the Chimera. I think the fact that we have destroyed one is kind of um, you know interfering with uh, with my judgment here. We did kill one Chimera but that Chimera wasn't nearly as built as the Chimera that I did fly so uh, I think that's the I think that's what's happening here it's definitely a good ship it is it is definitely a good ship and I would say if you go with any carrier you'll definitely have fun it, it's just that uh, we have destroyed one Chimera and I guess that's just that is clouding my judgment and that's okay there are some ships that are good, there are some ships that are actually amazing, but I don't fly them because I just don't personally feel much attraction towards these ships. One such example would be the uh, the Bellicose Kurtops. It is a, it's a good ship. I did fly the Bellicose 1, 2 and the Bellicose 3. And I did well in all of these ships. And I actually like them. But I don't fly them because I find them a little bit boring and the Bellicosa might be one of the ugliest ships in the game. Not quite sure why they did make that ship so ugly, but I, I just there is something about looking at the Bellicosa and it just doesn't, doesn't click with me the right way, so uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't fly that ship that often. But it's a good ship, uh, it's a good ship, definitely a very very good ship. The micro drive signature reduction definitely very useful. 
And of course, I already have the Ortus with maximum skills, so uh, if I fly a cruiser with missiles, it would be the Ortus. Already been flying that thing for a couple months now, and I honestly really like the Ortus. Also, flying the Stratios lately, really good ship. A little bit slow, but I can forgive the speed because I got used to slow ships. It's not that slow anymore, to be honest. Although big, big speed difference if you come from uh, ships like the Cinnabal. At the time when I when I wanted to fly the Stratius, I was flying the RB Covertops, was flying the Cinnabal, and both of these ships were quick. The Cinnabal was going 4.5 kilometers per second at one point. So that's definitely uh, what did impact on. Uh, on me being a little bit uncomfortable flying slow ships. But after flying battleships, dreadnoughts, carriers and all of these bricks, then I I will admit I got used to slow ships. So now even 500 meters per second is actually decent. So uh, that's the little story from, from my PvP and ship experience in the last two years. There is a lot more but the video is slowly coming to an end. This is the last wave of all of these ships. Well, uh, my... How I feel about the Thanatos, I really like this ship. So, most likely we'll get this one or I will get the Nithugur. Not really sure. Both have very good DPS, both are not that slow. Both look really nice. And most importantly, both kill ships very quickly. So, in the end, I think the main thing that will decide on which one I'll fly will be the price. Not quite sure which one is, is more expensive or which one is cheaper. I personally haven't followed the prices in a very long time, so I, I got no idea how much how much a Thanatos costs so I will have to do I will have to do a little bit of that a little bit of you know math to see which one is more affordable and which one does offer better value for the money but I, I think in the end both ships uh, whichever I choose both will run really really nice so uh, that was the little that was the little run with the Thanatos again uh, I'm very happy with this ship very very happy with the DPS actually impressive DPS for uh, a carrier and well uh, with that being said hope that you enjoyed hope that you enjoyed the builds if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you.